Hello friends, welcome to this YouTube video program. We are discussing about uh, various survey research method that we can use for conducting educational research. As I have already told you in my uh, earlier program that uh, we can conduct a type of census survey, uh, sample survey, longitudinal survey, cross-sectional survey, documentary survey, status survey, comparative survey and evaluation survey for conducting uh, survey research. Uh, in our earlier program, I have discussed about the census survey method and in this program, we will discuss about uh, the concept of uh, uh, conducting uh, the concept of a sample survey method and uh, how do you conduct a sample survey uh, research. Uh, friends, uh, uh, let us try to uh, understand the concept first. You see, sample survey means gathering relevant information about a smaller representation of the population under a study. As in census survey method, we have discussed that uh, as a researcher, you have to uh, you know, collect data from each and every unit of the population. In a census survey, there is no question of any sampling. Okay? So let the size of population is 1 lakh. So what you have to do? You have to collect data from 1 lakh population. As, as, as census survey uh, uh, in India, in the country of India, so every 10, year, every 10 years uh, 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 we conduct the, uh, um, uh, the census survey. So in census survey, uh, data has been collected from each and every uh, households. Okay? So each and every individual or the family are a party, are the subject. Uh, uh, you know, uh, to get data. So that's why when we talk about this sample survey, we are not here, we are not going to, uh, you know, uh, 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 reach each and every unit of the population. Rather, what you will do, we have to uh, limit our uh, population in terms of a sample. We have to select a sample from the population and uh, that population will be a limited uh, or a smaller representation, a limited group, and we have to collect data from that limited group. Population may consist of, uh, as I have, we have already discussed that it may be person, it may be institutions, it may be objects, it may be attributes, certain qualities, and families. So, as like when you are, uh, you know, drawing a sample from a population. Uh, you may get the uh, subjects of the sample in terms of uh, persons, in terms of, you can say, let uh, uh, students are the population of your study. So your sample may be student, may be teacher, may be let school is your population of your study. So you can conduct, you can uh, draw certain uh, schools from the population, from uh, a large number of schools uh, uh, to a limited number of schools may be an institution, may be objects, attributes, qualities, families, etc. The data gathered through sample survey are generalized to the population of the study. So this is try to understand, this is most important aspect. You see, uh, uh, what we do uh, in census survey, we are touching, we are covering each and every unit of the population, but in a sample survey, we are not covering each and every unit of the population. Rather. We are drawing a sample, let our population is 1000 and what you are doing, let you are taking 10% of the population as our sample. So here 100 will be the sample, okay, 10% of 1000 or 20%, let you are taking 20%, so 200 will be your sample, okay, 200 out of 1000. So what you will do, you have to collect data from 200 sample, but the result that you will get, that result will be generalized upon the population. So here population will be 1000. So the result of 200 units of sample will be generalized upon the total unit of the population that is 1000. So that's why in a sample survey, the results that you will get by conducting the sample survey, so that will be generalized upon the population of the study. So let me to give an example. Uh, let's study of a sample of schools drawn from a particular district towards implementation of Right to Education Act 2009-2009 can be generalized as a implementation status of all the schools of the district. So here you see, let you want to know the implementation of 
राइट टू एजुकेशन एक्ट इन ए डिस्ट्रिक्ट ओके इन ए डिस्ट्रिक्ट सो व्हाट यू विल डू इन ए डिस्ट्रिक्ट मेनी स्कूल्स आर देयर यू जस्ट वांट टू नो द इंप्लीमेंटेशन ऑफ राइट टू एजुकेशन एक्ट इन डिफरेंट स्कूल्स ऑफ ए पर्टिकुलर डिस्ट्रिक्ट ओके सो हियर फर्स्ट यू हैव टू लिस्ट ऑल द स्कूल्स ऑफ द डिस्ट्रिक्ट लेट यू आर गेटिंग टू और थ्री हंड्रेड स्कूल्स सो Among these 500 schools, let you are taking 10% of the schools. So 10% of the schools means uh, 50 schools you have to select. Okay. So here uh, you have to collect data. You have to visit the 50 schools randomly that you have selected. You have to collect that data from that uh, 50 schools, and the result that you will get the uh, you know the implementation uh, of RT Act 2009. Uh, upon the 50 schools that you will get that will be implemented upon all the schools of that district okay so that is not only implemented upon the uh, upon the selected schools rather upon all the schools means here the total population of the district so uh, try to understand uh, in a census survey we are touching each and every unit of the population but in a sample survey you are not going to collect data from entire unit of the population rather Uh, in an adequate uh, uh, number of sample we cover in our study and the findings that we will get that findings will be generalized upon the entire group of the population may be a district may be a state may be country also uh, uh, let us now discuss about the reason for conducting sample survey why do you, uh, do we conduct the sample survey okay first of all the first reason is uh, it reduced cost of the study you see your population is a very large entity okay the size of the population area so far as number is concerned it is very large it is not possible to cover the entire population so that's why when you are taking a sample from the population the units and the area are getting limited and when you are conducting your study in a limited area taking the limited number of sample so definitely the cost is reduced so this is one of the purpose then second is greater speed of the study you can say so when you are conducting your study taking a very small unit of the uh, uh, population as a sample means definitely you can speed up your work by taking a very little time maybe few months you can conduct your study but so far as census survey is concerned you see when you will conduct study across india when you you will reach uh, each and every household of each and every district of this country will find that it may takes um, uh, years together and huge manpower is also required for conducting uh, uh, the census survey so that's why here uh, uh, if you are conducting a sample survey taking a small unit of the sample from the population you can speed up your work and uh, with a greater speed you can conduct your study then uh, the another purpose or the reason you can say the greater scope of the study you see i have already told you in census survey the surface and demographic mostly the surface level and demographic data are collected but here when you are conducting a sample survey su sample survey you can collect data uh, you know uh, uh, the scope of uh, getting data uh, is very vast here you can collect a very in depth data a very involved data okay so the possibility to get uh, gather wide range of data from small group of respondent uh, you know uh, 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 is possible uh, so far as sample survey is concerned but it is not possible uh, so far as census survey is concerned then the last reason that i will say that greater accuracy of the study so when the volume of work is reduced and accuracy uh, then definitely you can say the accuracy of the work is increased means your quantity is reduced and when quantity is reduced so your your optimum energy optimum uh, research force will be uh, uh, you know uh, implemented will be focused upon a small group of population that is the sample so then you can say you can conduct your study with a great accuracy so these are the certain reason it reduce the cost uh, uh, speed is also increased then scope is enlarged at the same time you can conduct your study with great accuracy and uh, certain characteristics we can discuss that use of sample techniques for selecting a sample from pop, uh, from population we can use any technique a probability sampling technique you can use maybe a simple random sampling a stratified random sampling a multi stage sampling so there are 
many sampling techniques uh, are there by adopting a sampling technique you can conduct you can select a sample and conduct your study uh, and you can say use of adequate appropriate tools for getting data so here in census survey you are just using a type of questionnaire you are asking certain questions and you are writing the household data but here you can use varieties of tools you can use questionnaire you can use to um, test you can use a type of scale, inventory, checklist, so any uh, interview, observation, so any type of tools you can use to get um, uh, to collect the data. Then use of specific data analysis technique as per the objectives of the study. So you have to first understand that what are the objective of your study, then accordingly what tool will uh, perfectly fit or perfectly use for getting such type of data. Then accordingly you have to prepare and you have to select the tools for getting data. Then the most important thing is generalization of the findings upon the entire population of the study is possible. As I have already told you that uh, 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 if you are selecting a sample by using the random sampling technique, then definitely you can generalize the result upon the entire group of population. Okay, So you are conducting study upon a sample, but implementing that result, generalizing that result upon the population. So friends, uh, now let us try to discuss some of the examples of the sample survey. Uh, let first, I, I will give example of some of the studies. Let the first is attitude of parents towards midday meal scheme in the elementary school. Okay, so here you can study the attitude of parents towards the midday meals. Means uh, the midday meal is given to the elementary students. So what is the uh, what uh, what is the attitude of the parents? So you can define. Uh, a area first, then you have to cater the parents that how many parents are there, those children are studying in the school and you can collect data from them. You can also draw a sample, let total 2000 parents are there, then you can uh, collect a sample and you can conduct your study. Then causes of dropouts among distance learners as perceived by teachers of IGNU. Let as example in IGNU, what is the uh, you know perception of teachers towards the dropout of the learners? Why? the dropouts uh, you know is happening in IGNU what is the perception of the uh, teachers you can also conduct a study let in IGNU 1000 teachers are there then you can select a sample let uh, uh, take 10 percent or 12 uh, 20 percent of sample taking 100 or 200 teachers you can conduct your study attitude of university teachers towards learning through MOOCs okay so now massive open online courses is uh, getting popular in this country so you can also study the attitude of university students. So, university students, those are pursuing or those are uh, prospective learners, they want to pursue the MOOCs uh, uh, course. So, what is their attitude? You can also conduct a study. So, here no need of, uh, you know, taking the uh, entire college students or the university students, you can also draw a sample. Okay. Then, teaching competencies of primary school teachers in terms of using media and methods. Okay. So, you can also conduct a uh, sample of primary school teachers uh, and uh, for studying the teaching competencies of use of media and methods. So, what methods they are using and what media they are using, you can also conduct, conduct a study. Then, physical and human resources of elementary schools in educationally backward district of a state. So, here also you can conduct a study. This is a type of status study. You can say physical and human resources of elementary schools in educationally backward district of uh, state. Let you take the example of any state and find out that how many districts are educationally backward districts and what is their position, what is their status so far as physical and human resources of uh, resources are concerned. So here what you can do, you can list out the schools, that will be the population, then you can select a group, okay, maybe 10, 20, 30, 40 or 50 percent of the schools. So friends say uh, by doing uh, such technique we can uh, conduct a sample survey but try to remember, try to understand uh, that in a census survey each and every unit of the population will be the subject of your study and so far as sample survey is concerned only the group of sample that has been drawn by using a sample technique from the population will be the subject of your study. Okay. And uh, your study will be conducted upon that group, upon only the sample of the study. And the results that you will get, that results will be implemented upon the entire group of the population, maybe a district, maybe a state, or maybe a country. So, friends, uh, uh, in our earlier program, we have discussed about the uh, uh, survey research method, the concept of survey research method and uh, particularly we have discussed the census survey method and in this program we have discussed about the sample survey method. 
in our next uh, uh, program video program we will discuss the other methods used for conducting the surface research thank you